It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And Sarah, I love it when we have something in the box. What's in the box? Nothing's in the box, Chad, because you already took it out How'd of the box. How'd you do that? Really, when you said, what's in the box, I had to fight to be like Gwyneth Paltrow's head. It's never <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's head. So what's out of the box, it Sarah? Was that, it was that one time, though. <laughs> it was that one time. Uh, this is Blanton's Straight from the Barrel. I love how you pause. It's Blanton's. Oh, okay. Straight from the barrel. But it's, it's straight from the barrel. Spit take. Another one that we had to give a shout out to our Australi our Aussie friends, our mates. This is Blanton's straight from the barrel. This particular one, and Chris, God bless him, went around to three or four or five. I don't remember how many liquor stores to find the highest proof one. Isn't he sweet? First of all, they can go to stores and find. They can go to stores and find it. Blanton straight from the barrel. Not mad. <laughs> a little, a little mad. jealous. Not mad. But he found one over 130 because he knows we're proof hounds. So this is 130.3, and it's another one. As this week has been, we've done the 93 proof, the gold at 103, and now this one, 2018. Whoa. This okay. is from March of 2018. Now you said, you know, as they can do, as they can go and find these in stores officially. This will be a limited release now in the U.S. this year. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out in the fall. Seeing as how we haven't even seen the gold yet, we'll see. I mean, I believe that it will be here. The access that you will have to it is yet to be seen. We're, um, we're building up a nice little collection of, of Blanton's, of Blanton's uh, pull debris. <laughs> tops. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. I love how you're nervous, like you've never had this before. I know, well, it's just, I, it's... I'm like, you, what, we've had this. <laughs> I know. Pause for cork pop, though. Oh. Hi. I blame myself. Uh, the cork what? pop isn't all that counts? No. It's this not all that matters? This is an O-top, by the way. Chad? If you want to know the position that the horse is in, it's an O. It's the O in bland tones. Not that that has anything to do with the liquid that's inside. It doesn't. Can you believe some people think that? Stop. Well, some people, maybe they're superstitious. Maybe it's a lucky number, but a letter. You know what I mean? Lucky number. Like letter. they've always had really good luck finding L tops. I don't know what they do. Every trash can has its lid. As <laughs> Leslie Jordan likes to say. Right. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You know what? Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Is you... odd. This doesn't smell as high proof as the gold did. I think that the gold really holds its own in the nose department. I get ham. We got ham. We got ham over here. I love how you guys can tell like Chad is in nowhere in the vegetarian or vegan ever occurring. Like he's, cause every time I feel like we have something that's higher proof, it's bacon, steaks, barbecue, ham. I mean, who can blame me though? Whoever smelled a bourbon and was like, smells like chicken. Oh, I This get, smells like I a get, veggie burger. I get vegetables. <laughs> I don't see the ham, but okay. it does have a savory quality. Yes, there is definitely a savory quality. You could also akin it to barbecue. You know, there is a meaty, savory, like, I want to bite into this type of bourbon. Yeah, you know, sometimes they do like a barbecue with like a coffee bean, like a coffee ground, not ground, but you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, type of spice. They put coffee in the rub or whatever. Mm, that's the uh, rub. And that's kind of smells like that. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, vanilla. It smells like a nice cup of coffee. It, it does. It, it <laughs> smells like a very mature cup of coffee. All right. Boozy coffee. Happy Bourbon Heritage Month, everyone. That's when we're filming this in September. So, cheers, cheers. to you. Oh, I couldn't. Ha ha ha. Couldn't hold that in my mouth as long as I normally do. I needed. That was my introductory <laughs> sip. I think the next one will go better for me. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Where that's that one thirty proof well, words tongue uh, words tongue it like barely touched down on the tip of my tongue and was like just tag you're it middle back <laughs> tag you're it yeah um that was a nice little by the time roll. it hit the middle of my tongue my mouth watered so much and it got so hot that I I had to just go on and finish that sip yeah good uh, there was no I feel you you know Kentucky chewing this first sip. It wasn't mm -hmm. happening. I mean, it is 130.2 proof. I thought you said 130.3. Three. Three. Oh, 
Sorry. Yeah, I listen Sorry. sometimes. Point one. Hmm. Of a mash bill number two, which is Buffalo Trace's <gasps> higher rye. There was a piece of Blanton's wax on the bottom of my glass and it kept wobbling and I was like, is there is our glass defective? <laughs> it's not. Yeah, but that mash bill number two from Buffalo Trace, the higher rye, really sets in if the gold gave us a hug. Mm. This is a very strong Kentucky hug, yeah. but a welcomed one. Going back to the nose, I almost get um, some zucchini bread, which, you know, obviously, like, oddly does not taste like zucchini at all. Sweet, I, soft, spice yeah. bread notes. I don't know. I get some really light grapes. I thought grapes with the um, the OG Blanton's, too. Little tip for everyone. What I think our mistake was, having done the 93 proof a few days ago, the gold uh, yesterday, and now the straight from the barrel is that first sip we took. Mm -hmm. We took a sip like we were drinking the 93 Blantons. Yeah. The second sip, I made sure to take a smaller sip, which is what should oh. have done from the get. You want to just kind of acclimate that tongue when you're at a high proof. I didn't even learn anything from my first sip because I took the same size sip the second time. <laughs> I was just like, hmm, good. It's very buttery. Well, I talked too much and now I forgot. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go for my I third. Like... Again, I think it's that like the spice that's in a zucchini bread where it's just very faint. And that's, again, I think I said that with the original blends too. Very faint spice. It is a oh, very warm honey syrup. You have said honey about all three. Yeah. It's sort of like, I mean, it reminds Makes me a little sense. bit of, of like a hot toddy. Um, it doesn't taste like a cocktail, but I mean, it, it kind of has like this in the winter, you're that golden. Warming. You're golden. This isn't the gold. This is straight from the barrel. She's here all week, folks. Aside from being very warm, mm -hmm. almost with this proof, uh, eucalyptus type of like, I actually feel more opened up now. That 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 thick honey type of feeling along with the proof, and that nice little bit of spice that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I guess with this one, I'm not getting that like minty sense as much because I kind of more in my mind attribute that to high rise, which I mean, this is a higher rye for them, but it's still like what, 12 to 15%. I guess I'm thinking it's more of like the proof that's doing that for me. So it's kind of like, I don't know when you have wasabi and it does kind of mm -hmm. give you that, I can breathe now <laughs> mm. um, sense. That's kind of how, I think that's the 130 proof for me doing that job. Yeah, what I think I am is, experiencing is that effervescence there is like yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a oh, i'm on top of a mountain what you know what would you do for a klondike bar type of thing um that was a commercial a long time ago i'm on top, I'm on top makes of me feel mountain. like i'm on top of a mountain i don't think i know that one that might not be klondike but it was one of those ricola ah. so warm i mean the, it's still i'm still getting the hug from my last sip it rolls into sort of that espresso note that you're talking about. A, just delicate coffee, not anything crazy. Yeah, it's like a, for me, maybe more like a darker milk chocolate. But Have you ever had like chocolate covered espresso beans? Mm. Not the espresso bean so much, but more of the, the chocolate. The chocolate part, yeah. I'm about it. Yes. Well, so now? Well, now I think, I think I this is the part, if, if we were just, you know, drinking normally in the evening, this is the part, I think, where we would set it down for a minute because we have had the effects of it. Yes. And I'm not wanting to go back. Unlike, you know, the 93 where you just, you're like, oh, I'm empty already. Oh, so it's just me <laughs> that's doing that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just my personality trait. It's all right. But what we are going to do is let it sit here for about 10 minutes and then talk about how it's opened up in the glass. While we do that, it's a perfect time to remind you guys about WhiskeyAmbitions.com. It's where you can get, hey, two new t-shirts. This one's been out for a, a, a couple few, of weeks. few weeks. This one brand new. Oh, Bourbon, where art oh, thou? Bourbon, where art thou? It's right here. It's right there in the glass. It's Come right on. here. Uh, available at WhiskeyAmbitions. Uh, avail available at WhiskeyAmbitions.com. Yeah, that's where you can get uh, the Glen Cairns that we use, our water glasses, our rocks glasses, challenge coins, and more. Always coming soon at WhiskeyAmbitions.com. You can become a patron at Patreon.com slash It's Bourbon Night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. Uh, we have conversations going on there all the time, where whether we're just chatting with other patrons or giving you guys behind-the-scenes exclusives uh, or the inside scoop on new content. That's right. We'll be doing just a, after the episode, uh, kind of wrap-up of our Blanton's Our Blanton's week. journey. Yeah, another round of chat and zero. And that's where that will be. All right. 
I'm gonna leave it alone for a few more minutes and we'll be back. And we're back. Well, it, it has sat. It has opened up. Or has it? Does it open up? We can't well, just say, and it will have opened up. We don't know its life. I mean, we're getting ready to find out. We're gonna ask it, what are you hiding? Give me your tears. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I will look upon your treasures. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm getting a, a theme here from our blends. You know, you let it open up in the glass on a, on a neck pour, and it just becomes more caramel. Uh, a little butterscotchy. Yeah, more butterscotchy. Those fruit notes have opened up. It's become sweeter. I usually get a little sweeter when I open up too. Not me. I just show you all that meanness Ooh. underneath the surface. Mm, a little burnt marshmallow too, which I love. Mm. Mm, yeah, savory quality for sure. Almost what I would call smokiness, like a campfire vibe towards the end. That is really that picture is really becoming a little more clear to me now. But I got ribs a, are over that campfire. Though. Oh, see, I was gonna go with the marshmallows. Hmm. Um, I need. I'm picking up savory, picking up and savory. I'm not getting that in your marshmallow. It's not marshmallow sweetness. It's that toasted. It's the burnt part. Uh, a little toasty, and the, the caramel, fire caramelization. caramelization of the sugars. Yeah, and that campfire, you know, smoke and char, mm. but not real heavy, faint. Someone's doing it over there, <laughs> okay. and I'm not right next to it. Okay, um, it's giving me some fall vibes. Yes, uh, Very more comforting. more spice in this now. Um, it's sort of like a um, peppercorn. Mm, I, I think do that's, see some pepper. I, that's what I'm picking up maybe in these ribs. It's not like barbecue. You really want some ribs now? Because it doesn't taste messy like a barbecue. All right. Tastes more messy, like a fall off the bone rib. Oh my God, I'm hungry now. Um, I don't want to eat it around a campfire. That gun you blends. But the feelings are real. The feelings are real. Yeah, <laughs> you can sense that. I mean, there's a primal nature in this blend straight from the barrel. Ooh, excuse me, I'm breathing fire right now. That kind of... The gotcha. I, I started to talk. Too soon. Too soon. That is nice though. Well, I finished mine. Okay. So does that tell you how I feel about it? <laughs> now, Chad. Yes. What we haven't talked about about this yet is the price. And it's now following on the heels of gold. Now available, uh, or will be available. Now. It says fall it says 2020 fall. This is fall. in the U.S., but who? different areas will get it at different times, as we know. And you might not even ever see it. Right, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of other things, let's be honest. Um, but available somewhere in the US <laughs> as of fall 2020, which is now. Uh, well, technically it's September 21st. It, if Some people would say, don't put out your pumpkins till then. Uh, I, I think I'm kind of with them. Um, anyways. Suggested retail price of 150. Now, 150. now that's 30, only 30 more. 30 bucks more. Hmm. We talked about, you know, in our Blanton's Gold episode, the jump from 93 proof to 103 and the price doubling. Now we're going from 103 to, in this case, 103. No. Sorry. <laughs> 103 to, to 103. 103. So, you huh. know, how are you gonna... How, how even with the no. science? To 130. Point three. Point three. With this particular... With this particular. That's a lot more proof points jump, and it's only $30 more MSRP. Now, you're gonna see... The markup. More, heavier on this one. Mm-hmm. Because it's you know straight from the barrel, it's just it's barrel proof. But I was surprised to see the suggested retail price only thirty dollars more. Yeah, I agree with that. I felt like maybe gold was priced a little too high. Like maybe yeah. it should have been more around a hundred. And this, I still could. I mean, I see why one fifty. Now, if you're a person who adds water, which we normally do, and and we just didn't because didn't because I drank it all. We drank it all. Um, Whoops. But if that's something that you normally do, you're gonna stretch this bottle a lot further. If you like to drink it around 110 proof or whatever your proof is, mm -hmm. um, yeah, go for it. Uh, then this is gonna be a much better value for you than say the Blanton's Gold. Scalpel. Scalpel. So if we recommended the Blanton's Gold at 120, which spoilers, we did. We did. Uh, I, I see absolutely no reason why we wouldn't recommend this at 150 being 27 proof points higher and that's not everything. We but wait, there's we, more we if you buy now. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, what an experience. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it the old thumbs up recommend. A lot more brown sugar now. I got to do the same. Again, at MSRP, if you come across it, I would buy it uh, if I were you. Um, as of right now, it's going to be a one time a year release, yeah. or they're at least saying this year, TBD on what comes in the future. But mm, still really I would do good, it, especially if you're a Blanton's fan. If you like regular mm. Blanton's, then I think you you kind of gotta. If again, if you come across it. Now on the secondary, I don't know what they're going to be asking for this. I don't condone secondary prices. Would not pay that. Wouldn't pay more than one fifty. Because people will say, oh, Chad, I hear them now. I hear them saying, well, why would I spend more than $150 on a bottle or $150 on a bottle of Blanton's Barrel Proof when I can get Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for less than $70? When I can get Stag Jr., which is from the same distillery, for $50. And you know what? I think you should do that. If you feel that way, I agree with you. Those are also great bottles to You're have. You're right. You're right. But that doesn't mean this bottle is wrong. That person over there is saying, I decided to pay 150 for Blanton's Gold. Guess what? You're also right. Right. There's not a right or wrong answer. There's great arguments that you can pose, you know, with the Stag Jr., with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and other examples. If you would rather have three bottles of something uh, rather than one, then who's gonna argue that? Nobody. I, actually, some people will try someone to, someone will someone will try to argue, argue that. Anything. But what we're trying to say is good on you and you have our blessing. Sure. You wanna pay 150 for this? Good on you, you have our blessing. Um, we are the type that we want to experience as many bourbons as we can. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna spend $150 for this, have it in our collection. We're also still gonna go buy a uh, Stag Jr. And an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, we want them all. So, so there. it comes down to... And if you argue, you're not invited to the tasting. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it comes down to what's your preference, what's your collecting or drinking style. Both recommend for us. Um, Good stuff. Good it, stuff. It, it works. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. feeling pretty good. Yeah. So, I'm right. <laughs> so I guess that means it's time to go. It is. Um, hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already and would like to do so, we'd love to have you. You can click right up here to do that. There's suggestions of other videos. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Until next time. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. Drink more bourbon.